All right, and good morning, folks. You guys tired of seeing me yet? <laughs> maybe, maybe, but uh, don't worry. We've got uh, SAG Awards here. Uh, let's see, before the week is out, I'm also going to do uh, an updated Oscar prediction. I'm going to turn this down for a little bit. Um, and then I will kind of, you know, then you kind of take a break a little bit before we get to um, uh, another big push there uh, toward the end of December and when you get into... Uh, uh, that kind of stuff there, and then, then eventually we get to uh, the BAFTA nominations, we'll get to PGA nominations, DGA, and eventually Oscars, of course, in January, so we've got a ways to go on that. Uh, let's see here, so we've got the SAG Awards this morning, live reactions here. Uh, let's see, they are supposed to start in about two minutes or so. Uh, let's see here. Um, thus far, I've not heard anything about that uh, stunt ensemble uh, thing. Usually they announce the nominees on that actually pretty quick. Uh, sometimes even before the live uh, ceremony here. Uh, so far I haven't seen anything on that, but uh, if not, then we will find that uh, by the end of the, uh, the video there for sure. Okay, so uh, we're expecting Vice to do very well today. I'm looking at that, getting three nominations. Uh, I'm looking at uh, The Favorite to get four. Uh, let's see here. I'm looking at A Star is Born to be uh, actually a big nominee here, too, with four nominations. Uh, let's see here. We can see if uh, maybe Green Book can get three. Uh, let's see, who else do I have getting multiple nominations here? Can't even forgive me. I think I'll get the two supporting actor and lead actress, so... Looking at that one there. Um, yeah. Yeah, the rest of them should all be uh, individual nominations, I think, from there, uh, for the most part here. But, um, yeah. So we're expecting those films to have a, a big day here. If not, um, hmm. if not, SAG can kind of do whatever they want for, for some of it. So we'll, we'll see how far they go and how extreme they go and how, how far off the beaten track they want to go this year. Sometimes they do that. You know, one year you'll have, you know, Helen Mirren for Women in Gold and stuff like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see. Yeah, I'm hope, uh, hoping this will also kind of solidify maybe a little bit of those acting races, because a couple of them, especially in the last uh, few days, uh, especially the lead categories, for me, the last few days, they've been kind of, you know, you introduce some new players and stuff, and especially it doesn't help that uh, Critics' Choice went with seven nominees in the lead categories. So that doesn't help at all, because you got to whittle it down to five from there. And that doesn't really show you who's in and out. It really shows you, okay, well, these people are also in play, you know, and that's kind of a silly thing there. But anyways, okay, I've got uh, a start time, so we're just going to have to wait and see here for uh, what we've got. Oh, here we go. Turn back up now. I got a black screen, and this this did not work for me at all last year. So I'm hoping. Okay, so far it looks like. Yeah, this is my regularly interrupted sleep program. Not really, but. Okay. All right, my allergy pill is not kicked in yet either, so. If I, <laughs> if I have to lean over and grab a Kleenex or something, that's why. Welcome to the nomination announcements for the 25th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Yes, it is our silver anniversary. Oh yeah, 25 this year. Yep, that's right. I would like to just take this moment to thank TNT and TBS for their continued partnership. The SAG Awards will be Sunday, 20, or 27th. On TNT and TBS Sunday, January 27th ah, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Trying to drip here out of my nose while I'm waiting for these things, but oh, they're just taking a while so far. I'm only one minute in and I'm dying here. But anyways. Also, I would like to give a very special thanks to People Magazine for hosting our post-awards gala. Always fun. We are extremely grateful to She's them. Never been one of those stand up to cancer, a division I'm kidding. of the Entertainment kidding. Industry Foundation for their generous support of the SAG After Foundation. Okay, I'm gonna in the meantime here see if I can find anything on the to announce this year's Screen Actors Guild Award nominees. Stunt Ensemble. See she was featured thing. as Peik Ling Go in the romantic comedy Crazy Rich Asians. Yay! And next be seen in the near future cycle. I got burned by that. I'm not predicting it anymore. Aquafina. Okay. Okay, here I found him. Hold on. Winner for the portrayal of 
So well, let's see. What did I get here? I got three out of the five. She is currently working on the comedy horror Shit. film. Shit. All three of the Marvel movies made it in, if I'm reading this right, for that stun ensemble prize. Sorry to interrupt him here, but... Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Infinity War, Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Okay. Black Panther and Mission Impossible Fallout. So, okay. Hey. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Okay. Before Good. we begin, I just want to say, Aquafina, congratulations on an incredible breakout year. I'm so happy for you, proud of you, you. and only slightly jealous. Okay, I'll, okay, all right. And I want to say everyone out there. Um, okay, now we'll see if they uh, follow the trend here and go with uh, TV stuff first and then go to film. But we'll see. If you hear a voice, it's me. I'm done. Oh, goodness. Hold on a second, guys. Good morning. On behalf of SAG AFTRA, we are pleased to announce the nominations for the 25th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. We will be announcing 13 awards this morning. Eight for television and five for motion pictures. Now, let us listen with just one. Oh, okay, song. here we go. Ugh, I'm an old man. For outstanding performance by a female actor in a television movie or limited series. Yep, looks like they're starting with TV star. stuff. Amy Adams. Well, okay, Amy Adams might have four nominations this morning if she gets in for the cast for both. Well, hang on, do they have a ensemble for limited series? I forget. I don't think they do. So three, you know, maybe. Cruise, the assassination of Gianni Versace, American Crime. Say nothing head scratching so far from what I hear. Here. Emma Stone, Maniac. I'd say Maniac didn't do anything at the Globe, so the I remember for hearing that. Performance by a male actor in a television movie or miniseries are Antonio Banderas, Genius, Picasso. Pretty sure I put him in. Darren Chris, the assassination. Oh, uh, I think with the other, I went with the other guy for Einstein. American. Uh, Prime Story. Grant, a very I know I got him scandal. in. Uh, I did Hopkins, not go with Anthony Hopkins. And Bill, Pul <laughs> Bill Pullman, really? Okay, and she can say it. And Bill Pullman. I know I did not have him that in. That was a sinful pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> very good. You know, it's, it's pretty early. It's early in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, I can tell I'm pretty chill with these because I don't I don't predict these. Uh, the TV ones I think are a little more unruly. <laughs> Alex Borstein. Whoa, Alex Borstein and uh, Rachel Brosnahan both get in for uh, Maisel. Rachel Brosnahan, the marvelous Mrs. Ah, hold on, guys. Jane Fonda, Grace and Frankie. Lily Tomlin. Wow, okay, not a lot of diversity there in your comedy actress picks. Only three series get nominated there. Holy crap. <sighs> okay, looks like both Alan Arkin and Michael Douglas are getting in. Yep. Really? Okay. Okay, Bill Hader, I know I've got him in. I think I just had Michael Douglas in. Okay, they really went for Maisel on SAG here. For outstanding oh, performance wow. by an ensemble Again, three, nom three nom uh, nominated series there. Atlanta. Barry. I'd say Glow. no Donald Glover in that category either for lead. The Kaminsky Method. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Okay, now the drama stuff. outstanding performance by a male actor in a drama series. The nominees are Jason Bateman. Ozark. Pretty sure I had Bateman in there. Sterling K. Brown. I have Sterling. This is us. And this is us didn't do well at the Globes either. Joseph Fiennes, The Handmaid's Tale. Oh, Joseph Fiennes. John Krasinski. Krasinski didn't Tom make it in Francis, at Globes either. Jack Ryan. I don't know. I, I like the Bob Odenberg, Jack Ryan books. I've read a couple Paul of them, so I don't know. I was kind of iffy on the series though, since it's a modern take. I would have liked it if they John did it retro, the 80s, are, 70s set like the originals Julia were. Garner, Ozark. Hmm, Julia Garner. Huh? Laura Linney. Again, Ozark. two nominees from the same uh, two ensemble. Elizabeth Moss, The Handmaid's Tale. Elizabeth Moss, yep. Sandra O. Oh, okay, me. I think I had Sandra O. Oh in there. Robin Wright. I did not have Robin Wright in there because this last season of House of Cards evidently is deplorable. <laughs> We're going to get a couple people, anyways, but we'll see. The nominees <sighs> okay, <clears throat> hurry up, guys. The American. <sighs> That's weird. The Americans did very well at the Globes, but thus Saul. far, that was the only nomination for it here. The Handmaid's Tale. Okay, this should be the last Ozark. one for TV. This I think. is us. Okay. 
And Dang now, it. our motion picture nominees for outstanding performance by a male actor in a supporting role in a motion picture. Okay, here we go. Mahershala. Mahershala Ali, Green Book. Timothy Chalamet, Beautiful Boy. Adam Driver, Black Clarence. Okay, give me Sam Elliott. Yep. Sam Elliott, and Richard E. Grant, please. Richard E. Grant. Okay. Five out of five. Well, supporting actress. By a female actor in a supporting role in a motion picture. The nominees are... Amy. Amy Adams. Vice. Yep. Emily Blunt. Whoa, Vice. okay. Margot Robbie. Whoa, they're going way off track here. No favorites. I stand corrected. <laughs> Rachel Weiss? Rachel Weiss. Wow, they yeah. went there really weird with those. Okay. For outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role in a motion picture. Okay, what do we got next? Christian Bale. Christian Bale, yes. yep. Bradley Cooper? Bradley Cooper, A Star is Born. Ethan Hawke? Rami Malek? Ooh. Rhapsody. Viggo Mortensen, Green Book. John David Washington. John David Washington. Okay, good to see him get in though. He's great. The nominees for outstanding. Okay, actress is going to be weird too, isn't it? In in Emily's not going to get the double, is she? She is. <laughs> okay, I got that right. Glenn Close. The wife. Yep. Yeah. Um, Olivia Coleman. Olivia Coleman. Yep. Yeah. Lady, Lady Gaga. Gaga. A now give me Melissa born. McCarthy. Give me Melissa McCarthy. Rosa. Yep. Melissa McCarthy. Okay. Can you ever give me uh, sorry, guys. And finally, the nominees for All right, right, let's see how well I did here. Cast in a motion picture are A Star is Born. Yep. Black Panther. Yep. Keep going. Black Klansman. Ooh, okay. I missed that one. Bohemian Rhapsody. Really? Crazy Rich Asians. You've got to be shitting me with these. Come on, folks. Really? Oh, fucking hell. Jesus Christ. I went... That was weird. Oh, my God. Oh, well, that doesn't solve anything for our Oscar problem, does it? Okay, uh, where should we start at the top? Oh, my God. What the fuck was that at the end with that ensemble category? Holy shit. Okay, so Star is Born and Black Panther <laughs> were the only two I got. Okay, Black Klansman. I'm good to see, uh, glad to see Black Klansman here. If my nose would quit running. Uh, okay, now I, I flipped a coin because I wasn't sure if uh, Beale Street Could Talk was going to get in for ensemble or not. I flipped the coin. The coin said, do not put it in. So I went with Star is Born. Good thing because Beale Street got jack shit this morning. This is the one time so far I've seen Regina King not get nominated. I don't know what happened there. That is that is a first this year for her. She has been sweeping uh, critics' prizes with that supporting actress thing. She's been nominated Globes and Critics' Choice, obviously so far. Wow. Okay, that is that is a big oversight on their part. Whether I don't know if that just didn't. That's a weird. That has been. It played at the festivals. It's just opening now. Um, uh, that might have been it. Actually, it was supposed to open in November, but. Uh, okay, and then no clear foy for First Man. Yeah, I, I, I had a feeling First Man was not going to do well. So now Emily Blunt got two nominations this morning. Um, she got in for... So A Quiet Place continues. I had it in for stunts, so I knew I knew it was one they could they could have seen. But my God, I did not think Emily uh, any of the cast would be nominated, though. That is a big, a big surprise. Big surprise. Um, and Margot Robbie comes out of nowhere, uh, for Mary Queen of Scots, and not, it's not, uh, Saoirse Ronan who's getting all the critical praise and stuff, but it's, it's Margot. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, we, uh, Amy Adams got in, okay, and Christian Bale got in for Vice, and then that, oh, okay, Let, we'll get to that ensemble here in a second, but that is, okay, so, yeah, Vice, evidently, yeah, that, that went over well, that's fine. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Supporting actor, I got five out of five on. Actress, I pulled five out of five on. Actress was one of the toughest ones for me, too, to determine. But these might be our five going into the Oscars. These are the five I have repeating. So I think that maybe settles that for Best Actress. And I think Supporting Actor, 
uh, with Sam Elliott getting both Critics' Choice and SAG. I don't think that quite nails down his nomination. I think Sam Rockwell's a very popular actor. Remember that, too. And if Vice, you know, even though Vice kind of, this is the first time really Vice has underperformed here thus far in the award, in the award season, um, uh, I think it'll continue, he'll continue to be a threat. He's not going away anytime soon, I think. Uh, if, if he misses out at BAFTA and if uh, Vice kind of misses out for whatever reason on PGA or if it misses out on, um, you know, DGA or a couple of those, uh, you know, and it just shows an overall sign of weakness for the film going forward, then I think maybe we might, uh, uh, that might, you know, put, be the uh, nail in the coffin for him. But thus far, I think supporting actor looks like it's going to be these five with Sam Elliott in, uh, uh, in the category there. Okay, best actor, just one tweak. No Ethan Hawke. That, okay, this I thought would be the one place where we thought for sure Ethan Hawke would be a, bi a bigger player. No, he's not in. Instead, it's John David Washington, who I think, you know, he missed out on Critics' Choice. Seven nominations for lead actor. He was not one of them, but he bounced back here today at SAG. And he got the, the Globe nomination, too. So, you know, good for him. And, uh, yeah, so I put, that's weird, I put... They did not have John David Washington in for the Globes. He gets nominated. So I'm like, okay, I put him in for Critics' Choice because they go up to, you know, up to six. I'm like, he'll be that sixth one with these other five guys uh, minus, uh, who did I take out then? I had to take one of these out. Um, yeah, okay, I, plus one. Yeah, it would be Ethan Hawke. Yeah, that's right. There's only five here. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's all good and fine and everything. So I, and I, he didn't get nominated there. So I, took, I didn't have him in for SAG overall, so I was like, okay, he's not going to get it SAG. Here he is at SAG. Ugh, frustrating when I miss these, <laughs> especially when it's a performance like this that I've, uh, you know, I've rewatched, you know, the first time I watched Black Klansman, I thought, uh, I wasn't really focused on any of the performances, actually. I was more focused on uh, just the film itself and the script, which I got really taken by. And on repeat viewings, I found, you know, and Adam Driver, I'm still iffy on him. I, I just think for him, you know, I think he's just getting nominated here because they're ready to give him a nomination. And, I mean, it's it's a fine role and everything, and I think he does a good job in it. You know, he definitely gets into character, you know, when he has to go from, you know, the very sympathetic cop uh, who's not proud, uh, who's, who's proud of his heritage, uh, uh, his, uh, the Jewish, uh, the Star David and everything, and he's not afraid to hide that. And then he has to go to a, uh, being a Klansman. Ah, my nose will not quit running. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, totally professional of me, isn't it? Uh Anyway, so um, I don't know my allergy pill needs to kick in, but anyways, but then yeah, but then he goes into the into the clan part of it, and he has to be a very anti-Semitic, obviously racist uh, guy, and he's he's not otherwise. But uh, I get that, I get that, but uh, yeah, yeah. And John David Washington, I, I've taken a like more of a liking to with his performance in the the last couple of rewatches I've done of the film. So uh, yeah, I'm glad he's in because I think he does he does a good job. It's there's a couple of moments in the movie where he has to really walk the tightrope. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll just say his pretty much his whole part in the third act is a tightrope, and and um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's even just the whole premise of him being you know a black guy talking to a white guy on the phone, pretending to, that he's a white guy, you know, and and getting away with it for as long as he does. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so um, yeah, okay, let's get to this ensemble prize now. What? Okay. Okay, Star is Born and Black Panther I had nailed down. Uh, I've been iffy on Star is Born the whole time here, but I'm glad I put it back in. Uh, the coin, I uh, flipped a coin, it, it steered me in the right direction. <sighs> Escape. Ah. And uh, that worked. And Black Panther was one I did not always have in there for Ensemble either. But uh, just put in, actually I just put it in on Monday, so that worked out. Ah. <sighs> Okay, Black Klansman. Yeah, this this makes sense. Now, sometimes we see with uh, with SAG here, like we saw with uh, a couple of these, you know, if Beale Street, you know, kind of hits late, which freaking Mary Queen of Scots hit late too, and that still got in for supporting actress. That's are we sure we didn't get uh, a misreading there with her or Emily Blunt? Are we are we sure? <laughs> uh, I would say normally, yeah, but you know. Because Emily Blunt is very near the top of the alphabetical order, but Amy Adams is there for supporting actress, and we know that wasn't a flub on their part. Uh, and they had the right, it's not like they had the wrong, you know, this isn't a, a best picture, uh, you know, from a couple years ago situation, because they had Emily Blunt's picture from Quiet Place, and then they had it for Mary Poppins, so, yeah. 
So Black Lens, it came out in August. Uh, it's been around a lot. So I think this definitely solidifies that it's going to be an Oscar player. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm glad for that. It's one of my favorites of the year. In my, uh, It's number three on my uh, list so far of films I've seen this year. Uh, and then Bohemian Rhapsody in for Ensemble. Uh, why? Why? Number one, why? That's that's a very large ensemble there, isn't it? Yeah. Now Black Klansman actually has, when you look at it, a pretty you know a little bit of a sizable ensemble. You've got most you know a few of the key guys that are in the clan. You've got obviously all the uh, the police officers. Uh, you've got all the uh, black student union kids, or a couple of them at least. So it's like that one makes more sense the more I think about it. And that's one I, I mentioned it yesterday. I said it, it's it's uh, it's got a possibility, but uh, and yeah, it pulled through. Anyways. Um, but Bohemian, okay, you've got the four Queen members, you've got his girlfriend, you've got Mike Myers, uh, uh, you've got the manager guy. Who else is in the fucking movie? Nobody. Uh, okay, well, maybe one or two of Freddy's boyfriends, okay. Still, that's, that's uh, when you compare it to, like, Black Panther, where you have all of the uh, Dora Milaje, and you got all the uh, the rest of the court there, and you've got the, the two white guys, the token white guys, I like I like that joke. Uh, you know, and I, I make the same argument for Star is Born, where, yeah, it's those three, the three you got nominated here, and then you've got, um, uh, 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 Andrew Dice Clay, you've got Dave Chappelle. Really, that's about it in that ensemble, though. <laughs> Again, not too many of them, except maybe a manager role here or there, um, other than Sam Elliott. Yes, and then, uh, Crazy Rich Asians, I freaking get burned on this movie, God. Ah, Jesus Christ. Uh, I had it in, and I pulled it out, and it didn't, uh, didn't pay off for me. Ah, uh, fuck a duck. Anyway, so, yeah, this one, I have been on and off with this one all year, you know, it's like when I predicted, you know, like I did at the Globes, most of those paid off. Uh, when I predicted at Critics' Choice, didn't really pay off, so, ah, uh, shit. Anyways. So anyway, I don't think because now Bohemian has now got this and the uh, film uh, musical prize at the uh, at the Globes. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm disappointing anybody here, but that doesn't mean it's in for the Oscars. No, not by a long shot. It's uh, and it is. I, I get it. It's it's been a very popular movie at the box office, 175 million and counting here domestically, I believe. Uh, Rami Malek, I think, definitely solidifies this lot here today with his nomination. Um, and I think now, uh, definitely Ethan Hawke uh, is in danger of losing his slot. Um, uh, to John David Washington, or maybe, well, Willem Dafoe, I think, would have definitely helped if he had gotten in today, but he, he didn't. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing with, you know, even though, yeah, First Man didn't do well here, even though Vice, for, why, okay, so Ensemble, okay, so I get that, yeah, Black Klansman had two other nominations, it got three with Ensemble, that's, you know, usually we see a couple films do that. Black Panther... Got stunts and this, and obviously I think the Black Panther thing. I think that's uh, again that's going more for the diversity thing, which SAG usually does have a lot of diversity in their um, and a lot of their categories. And actually, as we see here, going through, you've got uh, well, no black no black actresses or they're you know, really all white, either American or English actresses in supporting actress. You got one. Uh, a uh, person who's not white in supporting actor Mahershala Ali, of course, all black or excuse me, all white actresses who are either English or American in Best Actress. You've got John David Washington representing for the lead actor category. So yeah, it makes sense that we've got three ensembles that are either a mix, you know, big mi mix of uh, black and whites or uh, mostly Asian American cast like Crazy Rich Asians. So it makes sense. It obviously makes sense. Yeah, and this is usually close to where SAG. Um, likes to rule on this stuff. They really like to, to get the diversity in, which I'm not complaining about by any means, because, you know, when you look at the large ensemble in Crazy Rich Asians, and it is a large ensemble, that's, you know, they like to nominate that. So that makes sense, and I feel like I, I like the movie, so, you know, I'm not, you know, just because I'm upset that I didn't predict it doesn't mean that I'm unhappy about the, the nomination overall. The Bohemian Rhapsody one is probably the first one that I take umbrage to. The uh, Star is Born is also one I take umbrage to. Because I, I like to see in this category with Ensemble, I like to see either, yeah, either a large cast or a very talented cast. Like Green Book I thought would have been a great nominee, obviously, uh, without having seen the film. Beale Street, mostly everybody has been in the awards conversation in that cast at one time or another, especially Regina King. And that's that's got to be the big head scratch today. Where the fuck is Regina King? 
She's been a big, I mean, I don't know if, uh, actually looking it up here for SAG uh, on the TV side and stuff, has she been uh, nominated a few times for her TV work on like, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, I can't remember it now. Um, a couple of her like uh, uh, TV series that she's done, limited series and stuff. I think she's, maybe she hasn't been nominated, because she's been nominated at the Globes, and she's won three Emmys in the last four years, I think, if, if I'm remembering correctly, for her work on, like, American Crime and and uh, uh, Eight Seconds last year, so, yeah, but that's that's weird. Um, yeah. It's weird they didn't go with her here, especially because I think she's just been just a steamroller through the season so far in that supporting actress category, but, uh, okay. Anyways, so... Um, yeah, so it's weird. You know, Vice is a big player, and then it doesn't get in for Ensemble. The Favorite gets three nominations, but then no Ensemble. That has got to be the, uh, again, two huge head scratchers here. Uh, Widows didn't get anything. Okay, uh, I'm glad I, I pulled those out. So I was worried about Viola getting one of those slots for Actress, but uh, especially when Emily Blunt got in for Quiet Place, and I was like, Yep, that means they're not going to go for it for lead, but then they do. <laughs> That's a lot of that today with the double noms. Amy Adams got a nomination for, uh, uh, um, what's the thing, Sharp Objects. Uh, I, I I missed it. Was it in for that ensemble category, too, for drama series? But uh, I don't think it was. Uh, yeah, so you got that. Um See Emily Blunt's the double nom. We've got uh, well, quite, I'm sure quite a few of the TV people are, are double noms, but I'm not seeing Emma Stone was a double nom. She got in for actress uh, in a I can't maniac was that comedy or was that drama? Whichever I haven't seen the show, so I don't know. Uh, she got one of the hosts and she got in for supporting actress. So yeah, what is up with this with the favorite? Okay, it gets three nominations, but that's not enough, or that's too many, I guess, and it's not going to get one for ensemble. Ugh. Anyway, so this that's weird. That is weird. Um, obviously, yeah, same goes for Vice, getting, you know, two big nominations there in Supporting Actress and Lead Actor, but no ensemble. Same goes with Green Book, two nominations, no ensemble. Um, anybody else here that got two? Well, obviously, can, uh, can't even forgive me, but that's, I, I, I didn't think that was going to be a big player for ensemble. Instead, no, you get one performance that gets nominated from Rami Malek for Lead Actor, and then, oh, let's put in the ensemble, too. Ugh, I just, ugh, I, I hate shit like that. Ugh, so weird. And, and, yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody, I think, of these five films, I've seen all of them. That's that's a rare thing now, <laughs> where I've seen all the top nominations in one category, finally. Uh, Bohemian's the weakest of these five, easily. Um, I mean, I, I still like the movie over. I, as I said in my review, however many videos ago, that last half hour with uh, Live Aid is fantastic, and uh, and I like the way they resolve, even if it wasn't totally accurate with the whole band breaking up and coming back together, uh, you know, because obviously that, uh, evidently that didn't happen at any point, but uh, uh, still, uh, that's still, a, a, I thought, you know, well executed for what they did. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, the Star is Born thing, I I think it's just in there because they think it's an Oscar front runner, and, and it probably, yeah, I think it's definitely in the in the, the t upper echelons there. Okay, so does this mean, yeah, so th does this mean automatically now that Bohemian Rhapsody and Crazy Rich Asians get in for Best Picture? No, not by any means. Uh, you've got, like we mentioned, The Favorite, you've got Vice, and those are easily way ahead in the Best Picture race than these two are. Uh, and as we saw last year, I think we kind of had to throw the rule book out on that SAG Ensemble prize. Uh, you know, getting a nomination there means, you know, one of these five wins Best Picture. I think that rule book, you know, got thrown out last year. So that doesn't mean it's over. For, that means it's not over for the favorite. That means it's not over for Vice to win. I don't know if Vice will win, but <laughs> again, a lot has to happen for that to, to go through. Uh, doesn't mean it's game over for Green Book. Doesn't mean it's game over for... Um, First Man, or for, yeah, you know, I'm just naming off stuff now, but First Man, I think we all abandoned a long time ago. Um, doesn't mean it's over for, uh, you know, if, if Mary Poppins all of a sudden comes through. I mean, I again, I doubt that happens, but you never know. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to, to say here. This is, there's a lot of crazy shit that went down that, that those last few minutes there. 
yeah, so yeah, obviously the big surprises here today are uh, with inclusions is Bohemian Rhapsody really striking hard there. Crazy Rich Asians gets nothing through the thing, but then ends up in the ensemble category. Those uh, those are weird ones. Those are really, you know, those anomalies like that are hard to predict. You know, even stuff like Mudbound last year, which was not, you know, forefront in the Best Picture conversation. Uh, I had that one nailed down for ensemble and for supporting, or not, I didn't have, uh, no, I did have Mary J. Blige, and that's right, yeah. I had her in for all the stuff except Oscar, that's right. Um, I think, maybe I had her, did I have her in for Globes that year? I can't remember, but uh, I know I had her in at SAG, because SAG likes Netflix stuff. Which is surprising, because I looked through, it's like, well, all these five films are, are not on, well, I, I mean, Black Panther is streaming on Netflix now, but that doesn't, it wasn't a Netflix uh, production. And none of these are. Uh, Netflix, actually, I think Kaminsky Method was over there on TV side, that did well. Uh, Maisel's Amazon, so I, that one's not Netflix. Uh, Maniac got a, a one at least, so that that's a Netflix one. Yeah, so usually Netflix is a much bigger player here, but uh, if I'm, unless I'm looking at this wrong, none of the film nominations came from Netflix this year. So, yeah, but I, I like I said, I didn't think Roma was going to be a big player here either, and that's another one where you know just because Roma got nothing and Beale Street got nothing, that doesn't mean they're totally out of the conversation for. Uh, uh, for the Oscars, just with the nominations. Now, Beale Street not getting anything here today, that shifts my confidence away from that movie for Best Picture. Now, I, I'll think about it. I've got to stew over all the categories now for the Oscars and kind of decide where I want to go now. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, uh, there's some head scratchers here. Yeah, the Regina King thing, I think that's an anomaly. I don't know. Other than, you know, the film coming out a little later than expected now, I don't know why that one is not in. I don't know what Margot Robbie is doing there. She has not popped up at all this season. And if anybody was going to pop up from her film, it was going to be Sir Ronan, evidently. But no, not this time. And then Emily Blunt uh, uh, for Quiet Place. That's, uh, oh boy, yeah. Again, I don't, I don't think that throws a wrench at all into the race. And this is an example where SAG went their own way. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so that's weird. It's like the other three categories, for the most part, I either had perfect or I was very close on for best actor. I was very close on that one. But that ensemble was weird. Supporting actress was weird. I still got three out of the five on supporting actress and two out of the five on ensemble. And I got three out of the five on the, uh, the stunt ensemble, which again, see, I need to write, write these down here on my thing here. We've got Ant-Man and the Wasp. We had Avengers... Infinity War, we had Black Panther, we had Ballad of Buster Scruggs, for whatever reason. That, that was the only Netflix thing right there, actually, yeah, so I take that back. If you count stunt as one of the major categories, there you go, we got one. <laughs> and uh, the last one was um, Mission Impossible. Fallout. Yeah. Well, uh... I don't know. I guess, uh, like I said, I, I got to keep writing articles for uh, cultured vultures here. So I will, uh, yeah, it's it's half an hour after. I'll go ahead and and sign off here. Uh, okay, so yeah, I will do a, uh, a wrap up on on this and do some uh, more thinking in the Oscar categories, and we'll we'll see uh, we'll see where I want to lean one way or another with some of these categories. But they're some major surprises here, especially with Bohemian and Crazy Rich Asians in for ensemble. Margot Robbie, uh, uh, back from the hospice of Oscar hopefuls, uh, with Mary Queen of Scots nomination here. Emily Blunt is in the same boat. Uh, you know, I I don't think they'll go forward, but you know, you've got Claire Foy and you've got Mar uh, not Margot Robbie, sorry, Regina King, who are I think much much bigger competitors here. Yeah, so. Mm. Yeah, I'd say and one thing I was thinking as they were naming off the supporting actress nominees, I was like. I didn't realize that they went past um, uh, K when they got to Margot Robbie. Otherwise, I would have said, oh, Regina King? No! What? You know, I, I would have done that. But I was thinking, I was like, maybe this is like Spotlight. Because Spotlight, remember, uh, for uh, SAG Ensemble, it got, uh, I think it got, if I'm remembering correctly, it got Rachel McAdams in for Supporting Actress, and then it got Ensemble, and that was it. And both, uh, well, we were thinking at the time, Michael Keaton and, and Mark Ruffalo, both of them cancel each other out for that supporting actor nomination, and it just ended up with the two nominations. And that was enough to, for that movie to win, too. So uh, keep that in mind, too, that you don't always need the four or five 
even three nominations to win this category. So uh, for ensemble, so that means something like uh, you know black. You know, obviously, I think Star is Born is. Uh, I don't know. It's like, I don't know where they're going to go if they're going to give Lady Gaga Best Actress here or if they're, we'll see if, you know, I would say Critics' Choice and the Globes both go for like Glenn Close or they both go in one way or another for Olivia Coleman. then I think that that will solidify here at SAG, but I don't know. Lady Gaga's still an option there. Uh, Bradley Cooper uh, and Christian Bale, I think, or and Vigo, those three are going to fight it out for Best Actor, but... Uh, Oh, man, but then you look at it, it's like Bohemian Rhapsody gets in for the ensemble prize, too, which shows they saw Bohemian Rhapsody and they liked it. So maybe Rami is also in there. Uh, you know, maybe a little, you know, tougher competition uh, than we were thinking, at least for here at SAG. Now, I think at the Globes and stuff, I think Bradley Cooper, I think, is untouchable at this rate in the Globes race. Now watch him lose. <laughs> but... Uh, I feel like he's an absolute lock for that drama category over there. Uh, yeah, Critics' Choice will have to decide between, I think, these three um, for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know because Star is more. I don't, I don't see it taking supporting actor for Sam Elliott. I think that's going to come down to I, – I, I'm still I'm, – I'm thinking Richard E. Grant might be somebody we're sleeping on in this supporting actor category. I think the Globes – Globes, I think, will go their – separate way. I think Mahershala, he, he was not nominated, or he was nominated, but he didn't win the year of Moonlight, so I think they'll correct that with his win for Green Book there. Uh, otherwise, Timothee Chalamet, he's, you know, he's a popular young actor. I think he'll continue to be uh, a nominee here, and I think he he has a shot to win. Richard E. Grant, I think, if he, he he's taken quite a few of the critics' prizes, not all of them, obviously. Sam Elliott's taken a few, and they've gone, you know, a couple of them have gone with some uh, outsiders, so He's. I think Richie Grant is still a viable option. He might. He might all of a sudden start sweeping if he wins like Critics' Choice, and then he wins here at SAG, and then uh, from there, I think you know. I think BAFTA. He's actually got a legitimate shot to win too, because Mahershala. Well, that's true though. Mahershala did not win BAFTA the year of Moonlight either. So that, as long as he gets in at BAFTA, I'm pretty sure he will. They might go for him there. Mm. That puts him, I'm thinking, that puts me back to like Jennifer Lawrence, the year of American Hustle, where she won the Globe and BAFTA, but she still lost the Oscar to Lupita Nyong'o. So, yeah, so that's, uh, that could be repeated here if we, if they go with somebody like Richard E. Grant, who, who's very reminiscent, I think, that year of, uh, or not that year, but a couple years later of, you know, the Sylvester Stallone thing where he was fighting out with a couple others, and then they went with uh, uh, Mark Rylance, who was kind of like Richard E. Grant, you know, number one from England, and then also, uh, <laughs> at least I think he's uh, from England. Uh, not Richard E. Grant. I know he's from England, but uh, uh, Mark Rylance. Pretty sure he's British. But uh, you know, he was another one who you know was consistently nominated. You know, uh, was pretty you know won a fair share of his critics' prizes too for that supporting actor category. So yeah. Anyways, anyway, I feel like I'm I'm overdoing it now. So we'll go ahead and and uh, log off now. So okay. Yep. There's. Big surprises here, and I, I think the the surprises will. Uh, hopefully, this is the end for them. So, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, it'll be a little bit here before our next live thing. But uh, yep, I'm gonna call it good there, and we will catch up with everybody later. I'll do an updated Oscar predictions relatively relatively soon. So we'll we'll get around to that.